This is Kennedy Classics with Dr. D. James Kennedy. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. Nobody spoke to the culture and the soul the way Dr. Kennedy did. And available now as we continue his legacy is the new improved Impact Magazine and Devotional from D. James Kennedy Ministries. This glossy full color magazine features thought provoking articles, great biblical resources, and daily devotional truth from Dr. D. James Kennedy, delivered right to your mailbox each month. Feed your soul and impact the culture with the gospel, the Lordship of Christ, and a biblically informed view of the world. For your free trial subscription to the new Impact Magazine and Devotional, simply call, write, or visit us online. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jerry Newcomb. And I'm Jennifer Cassidy. Is there a God or is there not? That's the most important question you can ask someone. Everything else is wrapped up in that key question. Everything from the ultimate meaning of life to ethics to the kind of society we want to live in. Vocal atheists like to claim that science has disproved God and yet nothing could be further from the truth. On today's program, we'll dig into the evidence for the existence of God. You'll meet a college professor who used to be an atheist and now worships Jesus Christ, even though it has cost him. And we'll share a resource with you that will help you challenge the skeptics. And I'm John Sorensen, president of Evangelism Explosion International, and I'll be back later with an important resource for you. My father, the late Dr. D. James Kennedy, was passionate to follow the truth wherever it led him. As we begin today's program, he defends the objective truth about God and answers the skeptics in his important message, Evidence for God. And now may we hear the Word of God as it is found, first of all, in one text in Romans chapter 8, and then the 53rd Psalm. If you would turn to the 53rd Psalm. Romans 8.28 says, as I trust we are all aware, and may God speak to our hearts again through his holy word, that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And yet, 53rd Psalm says, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them is gone back. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And may God speak to us today through his holy word and may his name ever be praised. Amen. Believers in the living God have always rejoiced in the fact that he has promised that he will be with us and never leave us and that he will in fact work all things together for our good. And yet we know that through most of this century, the very idea that any God at all exists has been under a relentless attack. And so much so that this has been called the century of atheism. So today I thought we might want to look at the evidence for the existence of God, much less the existence of a providential caring father. Is there a God or is there not? That question eclipses all other questions that man might ask. 
Now, should you feel that that is merely the statement of a theologian or minister, let me give it to you from another source. Dr. Mortimer Adler, former president of the University of Chicago, was also the general editor of that massive set of beautifully bound volumes, which I suppose graces almost every anywhere near complete library in the world, entitled The Great Books of the Western World, 54 volumes of the greatest writings of the greatest minds of the Western world, going all the way back to Thales, the founder of philosophy, up to modern times. Now, Dr. Adler says, that with the exception of a few mathematicians and physicists, all of the authors in all of the great books deal with the subject of God. And in their Syntopticon, which is a two volume work that deals with all of the subjects that are dealt with by all of the various authors, he is saying that the subject of God is the one that is dealt with by more authors than any other. The reason, he said, is obvious. Listen, quote, more consequences for thought and action follow the affirmation or denial of God than the answering of any other basic question. Whether a person believes in God or not, is going to make more difference than anything else. He goes on, the whole tenor of human life is affected by whether men regard themselves as the supreme being in the universe or acknowledge a superhuman being whom they conceive of as an object of fear or love, a force to be defied or a lord to be obeyed." Unquote. Yes, a great deal depends on whether or not we believe in God. Now, as I say, there has been a massive effort in the 20th century to do away with belief in God. But, my friends, times are a-changing. As the 20th century has been called the century of atheism, and by the way, a number of other things as well, including the century of anxiety, which no doubt is related to disbelief. The 21st century, as an increasing number of intellectuals are saying, is probably going to be the greatest century of spirituality in the last 50 years. The pillars of secularism, atheism, and materialism are crumbling. And they're crumbling from a two-pronged attack. First of all, from the attack of the gospel, as it is being proclaimed by increasing numbers of tens of millions of Christians all over the world, and increasing numbers of people are being converted to Christ in an astronomically increasing amount. And secondly, in the highest intellectual levels, there are increasing numbers of minds that are realizing that all of this materialism, all of this atheism has been dead wrong. The tide is just beginning to turn. One scientist by the name of James Reed put it this way, science is preparing a surprise for mankind. At least it will be a surprise for those who have doubts about the Bible and its God. It will also come as a surprise for those who are laboring under the misapprehension that science has undermined the Bible. 
In fact, it may even shock some scientists who may be startled to find out that their newly uncovered fact or accepted theory provides still another link in the chain of evidence that is showing that the facts of the universe support the Bible's statements, including creation. He goes on to say that for years he had endeavored to find support in science for the Bible and had not been able to do it using the Newtonian physics. But with the advent of quantum theory, quantum physics, quantum mechanics, in the 20th century, he has discovered more and more that the newly discovered facts of science support the teachings of the scripture and the belief in God. We have emerged into a new world where quantum theory has changed science almost completely and that these changes are moving in a direction of belief, not unbelief. And Sir James Jean, Jeans, one of modern times greatest astronomers said that the more he studied the universe, the more it seemed to him to be one gigantic thought of a great mathematician. That is, it is something that has uh, meaning and symmetry and reason. Now there are many other things that have shown the teleology or the purpose of the world in which we live and some of them are more commonplace than the ones that are being discovered now that are in these very esoteric realms of particle physics and astronomy. But just consider some rather close to down to earth concepts. The earth is not a solid ball of crust as we see it to be, but the hard part of the earth is as thin, relatively speaking, as the skin of an apple. And underneath that skin, there is boiling lava, which we see erupting from time to time through volcanoes. And yet we are kept from being broiled from beneath and seared from above daily by God's keeping these things in balance. And yet most people never even think about that. Now the atmosphere is made up of 78% nitrogen, 20% 21% oxygen and 1% of a mixture of other things. Now we never think about that. We breathe the oxygen and we enjoy it. Nitrogen, which makes up most of our atmosphere, is in combination a very deadly poisonous element. But happily it is extraordinarily inert. It doesn't ordinarily mix with anything or else we would die of some kind of nitrous oxide or the other. And yet, not only is it inert and would kill us, and yet it is absolutely essential to plants in the ground to grow. Now how is God going to get the nitrogen out of the atmosphere that won't mix with anything else into the ground for plants to grow? Well, that is what lightning does. And believe it or not, lightning produces 100 million tons of nitrogen in the soil every year that provides life for the plants which allows people to live on this earth. And if it were different, we would die. Not only is there incredible evidence for the existence of God throughout all of the realm of science, much of which is only just now being recognized by scientists, but also marvelous to tell that God himself has come into this world and revealed himself in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. And that not only can we know about him, but we can know him personally. And he demonstrated that love by going to the cross, dying for our sins, and offering us everlasting and immortal life. If you will invite your creator, your sustainer, your God to come and live in your life, you can know him. 
you can trust him and therefore you can find the peace and the comfort that he offers to all that will believe. May we pray. Father, we thank thee that there is overwhelming evidence for your existence. And we thank thee that many are discovering it now for the first time. And Lord, I pray that if there be any here this hour who do not know you personally, that they may invite you into their lives right now, saying, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, creator of the world, come into my life. Wash me and make me whiter than snow. Forgive me for all of my sins and live in my heart and mind that I may know you and love you and follow you until that day when I shall see thee face to face. I pray it in thy holy name. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer with Dr. Kennedy, I'd like to be the first to welcome you to the family of God. You're in for a great adventure. And to help you grow in your new faith, we'd like to send you Beginning Again, a book written by Dr. Kennedy for new believers. You'll be encouraged as you read a portion of the book of John each day. And you'll find answers to some of the questions you may have about your new faith. To receive your copy of Beginning Again, just write to our address or call our toll-free number. God bless you as you do. As my father shared in his message today, God has made the truth about himself evident all around us. Yet because human beings are sinful and don't want to be ruled by a God, they ignore the truth. And that's true, especially in our colleges and universities. Despite all the evidence for God, there's an intellectual bias against Christianity and Christians that retains control in many institutions of higher learning. As you're about to see, that bias can show itself in some insidious ways. You're about to meet a college professor who had the favor of his school's administration when he was an atheist. But that all changed when he became an outspoken Christian. The sixth president of the United States, John Quincy Adams, once said, quote, the birthday of the nation is indissolubly linked with the birthday of the Savior. But today, many are trying to dissolve that indissoluble link in the courts, in the government, and perhaps above all, in our nation's state schools. I've traveled around the country for several years and visited campuses and spoke on campuses. Dr. Jim Nelson Black is author of Free Fall of the American University. There's a concerted agenda by the faculty and administrators in particular to change the way students think, to take away their foundational beliefs in their country, uh, in the values of Western civilization, and certainly their belief in God. Despite <laughs> protesting to the contrary, <laughs> universities lack tolerance and an appreciation for the First Amendment. Dr. Mike Adams should know. He has been an associate professor of criminology at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington since 1993, where as a conservative Christian, he has butted heads with the school's administration. You know, you have the head of a university who refuses to call a Christmas tree a tree when she decorates it. All of a sudden, we have a, a calendar, a campus calendar, that for years had, uh, we had a day off in the spring called Good Friday. They rip it off. People are, oh, separation of church and state, separation of church and state. When I was a kid, um, 10 or 11, I was baptized, but I fell away from Christianity my very first semester of college. I was in a band. I supported myself for four years. Hair down to about here, it's kind of funny. The lifestyle just drove me, you know, further away from God, from to where agnosticism was not enough. I had to slam the door and declare myself to be an atheist. It was just really driven by anger and, and also by a desire to live free of constraints. But after witnessing a savage prisoner beating and interviewing victims of horrifying abuse at a prison in Ecuador while on a teaching exchange, 
Mike Adams' atheism suddenly melted away. I remember audibly saying I was wrong. Uh, I actually had an exact moment where I just renounced atheism and I, I said I will never, ever go back to that again because I realized when you cast your eyes upon absolute evil, it kind of proves that there's something that's good. The shadow proves the sunshine, as C.S. Lewis uh, was fond of saying. As he went on to become a Christian and become publicly vocal about his change in worldview to a biblical perspective and the politics that flowed from it, he began to encounter professional roadblocks. Before I, I became a conservative activist, I was given uh, several teaching awards in 1996. Uh, one of the top 50 professors uh, in spot evaluations, uh, student evaluations. 1998, the Greeks gave me Professor of the Year at UNCW, Office of Dean of Students, gave me that award in 2000. He's by far the best professor I've had here at UNCW. He, uh, he makes the subject matter practical, which is hard for some professors to do. He's just one of those professors that has just such a great attitude going into it. And even though our class is Tuesday nights for three hours, it's a complete blessing to go to class and be able to have a professor talk to you, make somewhat boring subjects completely interesting. But in 2006, Mike Adams was denied promotion to a full professorship by his state university, despite his teaching awards and tenure. I asked the reasons why, and uh, a letter was given to me by one of the defendants that said I was deficient in all areas, including teaching. Adams filed a discrimination suit against the school, which is wending its way through the courts. The University of North Carolina Wilmington declined to discuss the case on camera, saying it's not the school's practice to discuss ongoing litigation. In the lawsuit, he is being represented by the Alliance Defense Fund, co-founded by Dr. D. James Kennedy. It is a strange irony that in the early 1990s, I used to turn on Dr. James Kennedy on Sunday mornings when I wasn't going to church with a screaming hangover, and I would scream at Dr. Kennedy and I would actually hurl profanities at the screen and sometime around uh, that time uh, he establishes the Alliance Defense Fund. Later on I have a religious conversion and a political conversion, denied promotion and my representation is the Alliance Defense Fund and so it's been just really, really fantastic. Uh, it's all come full circle. Despite the barriers he's encountered, Mike Adams continues to write his widely read column at townhall.com and to speak out on hot button issues like the biblical view on abortion and homosexuality, drawing vehement opposition in the process. I have some memorable protests. A big profane sign was placed on a wall at UMass Amherst and I saw that this was bad. After the shock wore off, I said, this is going to be funny. We're going to go find the people that put up the sign. Were well, they upstairs? They were upstairs with signs, or so I thought. And I approached them, and it was the local Amherst Communist Party. And they're going crazy. And they, were, they all had pro-abortion signs because the speech was about abortion. I said, why did you welcome a guest with an F-bomb? And they said, it wasn't us. They said, it was the coalition against hate. That's gold. Political correctness is a way of silencing traditional thought. It's a way of telling conservatives, you may not think that on this campus, and it's being used all across the country. But though his stand for Christian values in a state university may have impeded his professional advancement, Mike Adams says that standing up for Christ's lordship over every area of life has been more than worth it. And what people need to understand when they stand up is, is that the very process of being involved in these battles, that's the very thing that, that our forefathers fought for. And in the process of fighting and standing up for what's true, you not only can live with yourself and have a life that's more meaningful, but you can also influence generations to come. I know my father would have been amused and delighted to know that someone who once yelled at him through the television set now defends Jesus Christ. Mike Adams recently won his case against the university in federal court. As part of the settlement, he was awarded tenure as well as $50,000 in lost back pay. 
The university also had to pay his attorney's fees to the tune of over $600,000. He's been rewarded in his stand for the truth. What would our nation be like if we had thousands of Mike Adamses willing to defend the faith no matter the consequences? Dr. Adams knows that the truth of God can hold its own in any setting. But do you know that? We have a great new resource from Dr. Kennedy that will help you to not only understand the historical, philosophical, and scientific truths of the Christian faith, but to be able to defend those truths to others. The Apostle Peter tells us that we should always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. The four DVD or four CD set, How I Know by Dr. Kennedy, will do just that. This features some of his greatest teachings on the defense of Christianity, including such messages as how I know there is a God, how I know the Bible is God's word, how I know Jesus is God, and how I know Christ rose from the dead. And we'll send you this four DVD or CD set as our way of saying thank you for your generous donation of any amount to the ongoing work of our ministry for a limited time. Simply write to us at Box 6085, Albert Lee, Minnesota, 56007, or call toll-free 888-334-9762, or go online to djameskennedy.org. Also, for a limited time, we'll include the handy Fast Facts reference card on how I know the Bible is God's Word. This card is a great, easy-to-access reference for some of the basic facts about the reliability of the Bible, so don't delay please contact us right away with your generous donation of any amount. And we'll thank you by sending the four DVD or CD set, How I Know, plus the Fast Facts reference card on how I know the Bible is God's Word. Simply write to us at Box 6085, Albert Lee, Minnesota, 56007, or call toll-free 888-334-9762, or go online to djameskennedy.org. Also, don't forget that you can have Daily Truth delivered right to your email inbox. Just go to djameskennedy.org to sign up for Daily Truth from D. James Kennedy. May God bless you as you do. And may God bless America. Today's program is available on DVD or audio CD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. Next week on Kennedy Classics. The new tolerance. You must even be willing to promote and endorse that other lifestyle. I've received a number of death threats over the years, and I certainly receive hate mail every day of every week. That's next week. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.